Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Arkham Horror the 3rd edition playing a scenario from the Secrets of the Order expansion down here. Before I get started and I don't know why but I tend to forget a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there really 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 do appreciate all your support. If you want to help the show if you want to help me then definitely um, check out my page on Patreon. Join me here directly on YouTube. I um, really highly appreciate that. And yeah, I think in respect to goofs, I should be okay, actually, as far as I could tell. At least I didn't see any comments. I didn't really see a lot of things during editing. Yes, one or two things I believe I caught afterwards. So again, I think I should be okay. There was a cool comment or an interesting comment in respect to how I'm resolving those encounter cards. So I don't read past um, a test, for example, on a card. I really am acting surprised. And when I play this game multiplayer or these kind of games, this includes Eldritch Horror, for example, I usually have the other player read the encounter to me so that I don't know what's going on. So I know that's not how the rules are written and I know some of you are playing it that you basically played with all the information present. I don't. That's why sometimes I do some subpar choices here like using um, rerolls for example for things with no ill effects. <laughs> Okay, that's how I played. Would be curious to hear how you play, actually. So, okay, um, we could get started. We have Agatha down here in the Vale of Pnath. Really a name that's rolling off the tongue when <laughs> I get better, it seems. And I was a little bit concerned about the Cursing Hound up there. The thing is, um, he's a hunter, but he moves directly to and engage highest strength, which in this case means this guy will not move down to her. He will move or jump, teleport, whatever you want to call it, to either Michael or Mark. Mm, and that's, I think, okay, actually. So for my action or for Agatha action, I think I want to start with her. It might be a good idea to go with a ward action down here to get rid of some doom. And yeah, when we are getting rid of both of those, then we also get an additional remnant, which is never a bad thing. And I could still debate if I want to go for focus, if I want dollars, but she has just collected some extra dollars here. The one thing I'm really tempted to do is to go with the Call of the Dead spell down there because it would allow her to discard the top card of the location deck. And if it is the clue or an event card, we gain that clue right away. So she could gain two clues this round and that's massive. That's really massive. And I think let's do that. So we are invoking the Call of of the dead which means she has to take two more sanity hits basically oops, you cannot see that that's the price of that spell down here going to three that definitely does hurt so i have to do something about that and then we are going to test um, our law minus one so we are still rolling four dice but unlike eldritch horror there are typically no ill effects on the backside of these spells here for example i think it's also the case for mansions of madness the second edition some cards do have some effects some status effects for example but the vast majority of cards really do not come with any effects on the other side so let's see we are hoping basically for one success yes and yeah that's a success and again these awesome dice i got from patrice thanks again so they are they're working out pretty well actually so we were successful which means we are discarding the top card of the underworld deck and if that is an event card and it's not it's not are you kidding me there were th two cards out of three out there it's incredibly unlucky so there would have been a clue symbol on the top left so but it's still we are discarding it right yeah anyway so we know now for sure that um our encounter will be an event but still that's that's really that's that's not great and then i guess up next we are going to go with a um ward action to get rid of some doom down there so let's bring out the dice tower again this time we are rolling five dice because we are not suffering any effects whatsoever ill effects whatsoever and yeah we are hoping for two successes because if we get rid of both of those we would also gain a remnant and yeah these are two successes amazing so we are doing some damage control here and because again it's at least two um we have removed to doom 
we are getting a remnant and you can trade in remnant for all kinds of stuff really like that a lot and yeah we didn't go with the occult principle nope that's basically it oh but again i keep forgetting whenever one or more horror um, you may focus one skill of your choice and gain one remnant and the end is really the amazing part her special ability is powerful for her that's cool and we can still focus stuff so i guess in this case we will go for uh, let's go for strength just to have it if in case i mean it's an additional die that's never a bad thing so yeah that's pretty powerful and she's now at her focus limit you can always exchange focus as far as i can remember but you cannot go beyond that okay those were the two actions of agatha and i guess up next we might want to deal with michael mclan who could use his old boiler now to kill the tail and cannibal here mm, i'm not 100 percent sure about the timing in this case though but i guess that's right so in order to, we can move down here and whenever we are moving into a space with a ready monster the monster will immediately engage with it and we have to end our movement but i still think i want to do that because again we need to do damage control also in respect to monsters when there will be new allies coming out and we have too many monsters on the board that's definitely a problem and right now he's still in a good shape i guess so we are moving one space down here which means this monster is now going to engage with michael this also ends oops also ends our movement step and now we check a couple of things first of all after this monster becomes engaged with you suffer one horror that was the one piece i was not sure about and i'm still not sure about if i like that a lot but that's okay that's okay then we're using the old boiler here after you perform a move action so this happens basically afterwards you may deal two damage two damage to one monster you are engaged with this monster is taking two damage by the way right yeah it has two so it's dead and it also comes with a remnant again having remnant for all of our investigators is not a bad thing so this monster is dead and it goes on top of our monster deck so that's great and we also have to assign two damage to the car here to the old boiler which is which is okay i take that no that's really okay but now we are stuck in a street space and there's really not a lot to gain actually um we could go for a focus action but he's already maxed out in respect to focus yes i could do stuff with it um but i don't know it doesn't really help me i could go for an action here um choose one once on any space mm, we could exhaust but then we need um yeah we need to evade with a monster evade value so let's say we wanted to exhaust this monster here in any space we would only roll one die and oof, i don't like my chances on and yeah we also have to suffer basically a sanity hit for that so i guess in this case we will simply gather some resources which means he will get a dollar right i think yeah let's do it like this a little bit wasteful but again we were getting rid of a monster relatively easily so i think i like that one a lot actually but that was basically his action and last but not least we have mark harrigan and there is a clue down here which is awfully tempting and i guess we want to go there right so we are moving one two three spaces down here to hangman's hill this also opens later on easy possibility to move into the underworld yes we have to pay some let's call it resources it will cost us but i think that's okay we still have to spend our last remaining dollar that's certainly a problem and now we still have an action there is nothing to gain so i guess in this case he will totally go for a focus action too because i don't think he needed needs a dollar right away i guess not i guess not he mm running out of money is also a problem but no i think he should focus i mean strength is pretty solid i guess he has a re-roll maybe just to have it some lore who knows what will happen yeah let's give him a lore so that he at least will be able to roll maybe one more dime let's see about that that was also already the end of his turn so we are moving into the monster phase this one is easy it will simply activate the vicious glutton and then it will move to engage to the lowest will which might be agatha but again that's basically the turn it recovered and then last but not least we have the 
coursing hound. It's not the cursing hound, it's the coursing hound. And I think think I get to choose where to move it to mm, because yeah they have both a strength of four so should we move him to Michael on the other hand yeah Michael is only on a street space which doesn't do me anything good here we could go the clone I think we have to send this to Michael it immediately engages with Michael again and then yeah it does oh yeah it woof, that's a tough one i really should have checked that out it does one damage here that's really not a problem but two sanity hits here that's definitely massive so let's assign the monster and i really hope i'm not forgetting this uh, i think one will go in here yeah i think we have to split it up yeah let's or we could Give it to the warding stone actually that sets something to consider too they're two independent damage sources and it's still no let's let's send this one here and i think and one has to go to him and then i think we will also assign the hit to leland in this case that's okay no i think we were able to deal with that and it also has the retaliate action which is um or keyword which is kind of new in this expansion after you perform an attack action it doesn't matter where we are as long as we are engaged to this monster and we are doing no damage to the coursing hound it will give us basically one damage it attacks you no it does a full attack so that's something if we're attacking something else while engaged with the coursing hound it will bite us that's definitely problematic I have moved the coursing hound of Michael now to his, let's call it Stanley here, because that's typically the way I, how I remember it. Um, so if it's like this, it would be exhausted. If it's like this for me, I know, hey, it's engaged with this. Having this on the board, I really tend to forget that then. And let's, let's really hope for the best here. And I guess up next, we are moving into the encounter phase. And we will start with Agatha. As I get to choose the order, and we do know it had to be an event. You walk along the rocky border of the Bonefield Valley. Okay, we are doing an observation check with her, which is three dice. So let's see. And yes, we have two successes even. Nice. And yes, I did not read uh, ahead. If you pass, you find the corpses of several gucks covered in strange ritualistic markings and surrounded by odd artifacts. Gain one clue from your neighborhood and one common item. Oh, that's nice. So let's gain this clue. And now I can go with the occult principle, which allows me, after you gain a clue from your neighborhood, which we just did, um, we may place one doom in your space to gain one additional clue from the token. And I will totally do that. So here is our extra clue. And one doom goes to the Whale of Pnath. And then I guess we have to flip this card. So let's do that. And now we have the scientific method, which says after you perform a ward action, if your test result was two or more, you may perform a research action as an additional action. If you do, we flip this talent. That's very, very nice. So if we go for a ward, we are rolling two successes. Um, then we can immediately go for a research action, which would allow us to move basically clue tokens to the scenario sheet, which again, is the name of the game awesome but we still gain a common item and both the leather coat and the dynamite are awesome the map of arkham while you're in a street space monsters do not engage you that could have been so nice for michael now actually but again he wants to go after this so i'm really now torn between liquid courage i don't know that's too hmm. that's too extra sanity for her but i think still the leather coat getting one extra observation so when she's going to evade and she's really not our fighter this might be the better deal yeah let's go for the leather coat for her cool um it also comes with some damage which it can soak up and we are revealing a new card right away oh that would have been nice yeah i think i would have given this to her instead but okay yeah i i made my choice but the leather coat is pretty cool actually okay i discarded the event card so the world of walls of sin is now the unstable space uh, Michael doesn't have an encounter because he's engaged with a monster. So last but not least, we have Mark Harrigan at the Hangman's Ill. And in theory, there could be an event here, but unfortunately, it's not an event. But the good thing is that one of the next two cards is an event. A morose 
ghostly, ghostly child draws your attention to a tight nook in the roots of the gnarled and twisted tree. A strength check. That's pretty solid for him as he's rolling four dice in total. So let's see about that. And yes, that's good enough. If you pass, you break away the thick bark and cold earth to find a long forgotten book. Gain the lost journal. Okay, that's one of those um, named cards in the deck and the deck really has become incredibly massive. So it might take me a while to find it. So here I found it. It's a common term. Once per round after you gain a remnant, this item recovers one sanity. That's not bad at all. For him, getting something pretty much for free that can soak up some sanity hits and also can heal his sanity. I think that's pretty strong. Would be also great for Agatha actually because again she needs to spend sanity like crazy for her spell. But still, I like that a lot. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool for him too. And then that's the encounter phase. We are drawing some Mythos tokens. Again, we start with the lead investigator in this case. That's another Doom. So again, we're drawing from the bottom of the stack. That's the Miskatonic University and it goes to the own library over here. So now that's a good reason to move there. Moving to a space with only one Doom mm, feels kind of lame actually, but for two that's at least worth because you can gain, um, let's say, remnants for that for example. We still have to draw one more. So let's see what we get. That's a clue. I take that. And in this case, we are adding one more to Uptown. So again, we are taking the topmost two cards. So we know now for sure that two out of three are clues here too. I like that a lot, actually. I like his chances, even though there is this monster here, which is definitely problematic. Then we resolve the two tokens for Mark Harrigan. That's a blank, which means the hidden path is moving so it's flipping and then I turn it around and then I will place it here. So that works pretty well actually. I was thinking about hey maybe that's a little bit fiddly or so but this really falls into place very nicely. Really nicely done actually. Let's draw the second one and that's another monster and that's the menacing bulk. Mm, Spawn at streets nearest leader. Yeah that's that's really bad. That's a lurker. Um, the nearest investigator suffers one horror. That's really extremely nasty, which in this case means we are taking this and moving this to Michael too. That's really a problem now because he can only do one combat action. Oh, that's really bad. I think yeah, we have to kill this one here or I have to try to kill this one and then not sure what we do. Maybe then afterwards we are going for an evade action because again, Sanity could be a problem for him actually. But okay, those were the two tokens for Mark. Let's draw the two tokens for Agatha. And he, oh, okay, that's a gate burst, which is not great. So now we are taking the top card. So we see the symbol here, top card of the deck. And we are adding um, one doom in each space of that neighborhood into north side. Then we are taking those cards, shuffling them and putting them to the back of the deck, which is kind of pandemic style, which will ramp up, let's say, the difficulty or the, the danger of certain neighborhoods because they keep coming back. But let's deal with the three tokens here in the north side, which could become problematic relatively easily. So we are again shuffling those cards. They go back to the back of the deck. Um, and then, yeah, basically now we don't have a discard pile, which means the starting space is the unstable space, which in this scenario is the train station. But of course, we are not done yet. We still have to draw one more and that's another doom. You must be kidding me. So now we do have, and this goes to the Miskatonic University, again into the own library. But again, these cards will now come back and that's kind of a problem because due to our outbreak rule here, it says if a space has four or more doom, so one more doom here, um, terrible stuff will happen. We will add more doom to the other um, locations here and we are adding one doom to the scenario sheet. And I think with three, we are flipping the Dark Disciples card, yes. Okay, I think I will do one more round in this video. And we want to start with Michael because we need to see how good or bad we are doing here. 
Um, we are engaged with both, so that's okay. Which one is easier to evade afterwards? That's okay. I think we have to attack the retaliate monster because if we attack the other one, this will bite us anyway. So I think we are going with an attack action. We are using our Chicago typewriter, which is definitely helpful in this case because it gives us four extra dice in this case. We are losing two dice, so overall we are rolling six dice, and yeah, but we still need three successes, so that's not easy so let's see yeah six dice in total right yeah, 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 yeah. okay and oof, that's a massive fail that's really a massive fail and again if we are not doing any damage including this one it will directly attack us are you kidding me there's really not a lot we can do but of course we can still use our oh <laughs> it's so bad this is bad. So we are discarding our focus, which means we are allowed to reroll one die for that. That's really sad. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's massive. Oh, no, I think we had one extra die. No, um, this was basically the six die. I forgot that we had six die. So that was the extra die. Still not good enough. Now we are spending this um, to reroll another die here. And come on, we need one five or a six. <laughs> no, 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 no awfully close are you kidding me so is there anything else we can do i think not action after you gain once per round as a ward after you perform a move after you defeat no oh boy which means this monster is retaliating so again we are taking some damage so i guess in this case we are assigning um the damage i think we have to get rid of leland here because again there's nothing to gain from that so first of all we are assigning the health here and i think i can choose the order of assigning this so that's the one wound we are taking we are assigning one more here. Oh, that's so bad. One more here. I think he will be dead, actually. So this will go here, and we have to take one more. Okay, wow, the Chicago typewriter really failed us here. So the Leland Williams is no more because he has two sanity hits. So out of the game for good. So we lost him in the end. And then we still have an additional action. There's not a lot we can do. We can go for a focus, but in this case, we do have to go for the, oh gosh, for the observation, uh, for the evade action. There's not a lot we can do when we are engaged to monsters. So while well, we have to do something about that, yeah, I don't know. I'm just checking the talents of the other players, but I think there's really nothing we can do. So yeah, we could he could still focus, but focusing doesn't do him anything good because he will get hit basically by both of those. So he has to roll his observation. Would be a minus one, but in this case, or in this game, you're always rolling at least one die. And ideally, we can at least evade this fella here because then we might have the chance still. I think we can live. No, I think we can live actually. But still, that's really bad. Come on, one success. Yes, okay, cool. So we have basically, um, yeah, exhausted this one here. So we are moving it like this. So that's, that's at least something. It will attach to us again basically with with its next activation but at least we're only dealing with but now we would gain fatigued oh that's terrible that was a bad 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 turn for mark uh, michael she could now actually move over to uh, michael um because she could move over here and yeah she would take no she cannot one two three four yeah she could she could but she would still lose an awful lot of things. She would basically lose both of her focus token, one health. No, I think let's not do that. I think we will stay on target. We will go with the ward action here and we are hoping for two successes because then her scientific method would kick in, which would give her an additional action. I think that's never a bad thing. Yeah, let's do that. And yes, that was an amazing, that, that were, would have been a role for Michael actually. So we are getting rid of this. It's only one. So we are not getting a remnant, but it's gone. But we rolled two or more successes, which triggers the scientific method. So I'm now allowed to go with a research test, which is an observation test. And that's really something I regret now that I didn't up her observation instead, but okay. We only need one success in this case as an additional action, yes. Yes, okay, 
I take that. I will reroll this. It didn't come, but again, the six is there. So we are allowed to move one of those clue tokens now basically for each success we rolled onto the scenario sheet, which now has three of those tokens, uh, three of those clues. So we are looking at the strange pantheon here. When there are three or more clues on the scenario sheet, flip this card. So let's do that. The forces marshaled against you are consecrated in the name of the Great Ones, the mythic deities worshipped in an, an ancient region called Nar. What you would once have discarded as odd superstition is evidently all too real. Your efforts have drawn the attention of a foul priest of the lost gods, a towering, undying giant. As horrific as that creature may be, stopping its rampage will get you any close will not get you any closer to ending the greater threat. If the street of Nar is not in play, a seer of Nar is not in play, take card 145, mummified gag, epic monster, and spawn it at the unstable space. Okay, have to check that. And place one bystander in the space with the most doom. Okay, that's easy, I guess. And then we are taking six markers, two green, two blue, and two red, and randomize them face down for each Arkham neighborhood. Place one face down marker in the space that in that neighborhood with the most doom. Add card 140 to the codex and return this card to the archive. Okay, a lot going on. First of all, we are uh, taking out card 145. Which goes into the own library, which is currently the unstable space. So that's definitely a problem. It's a lurker, which typically those monsters are on um, place one doom in the unstable space. And again, right now, this is the unstable space when it activates. And well, it's an elite one. The mummified god has one additional health per investigator, which means it's seven minus one minus one. It's massive, so it cannot be exhausted. Wow, engages and attacks each investigator and it cannot be, yeah, of course, we cannot simply evade it. We can evade it, but we are not um, exhausted. And after you disengage this monster, place one doom in the unstable space. Yeah, that's a massive one. That's really a massive one. So that was the first thing. Then we are placing a bystander into this. But again, as it is a lurker, it's not going to attack that bystander as far as I know. So we have another ally waiting there for us, at least maybe. And then we take um, some markers and yeah, depending on where those markers go, this will really highly randomize the, the game. Even if you know the scenario very well, you never know where those things are showing up, which is really something I like a lot. So two green, two blue and two red. So I randomized those, pretty much shuffling them. And now I have to place one in each neighborhood, six. And we have six around, so I'm not sure. I think the underworld in this case doesn't count. At least I think, at least I think. So one goes in here, one goes in here, one goes in here. I think here we can choose, so I will place it here. Here we can also choose, we will place it here. And this one has to go into the space with a mummified gook, right? And then we are adding card 140 to the codex and we are basically discarding this one. And here we have the, a dark ride. The monstrous invaders seek your extinction. Though the ancient gods they serve bear only a crushing indifference toward humanity. The disciples of Nar seek to perform a ritual to return their gods, the great ones of Kadath, to the prominence they lost when humanity spread across the world. You must search for more information about how they seek to do so. Okay, as an action, spend two clues from the scenario sheet. So right now we have three of those to reveal a marker at your location. Then if markers of two different colors have been revealed, flip this card. Okay, so we have to go for two different ones. So I think mm, that's kind of doable, I guess, but we need at least one more clue on the scenario sheet. But that's only in the most ideal case, actually. But okay, I take it it's doable. I think we were okay doing it relatively early, I think, and I hope. <laughs> Let's see about that. But actually, I think this was only one action she has taken because the research was an additional action she got from the scientific method, which we have to flip back, by the way, to the occult principle. So what are we going to do next? Um, focusing doesn't help. We could go for the call of the dead. The problem is 
we are discarding i'm pretty sure now i kind of lost track but i'm pretty sure we would discard a an event card so then the next event card would be pretty much wasted so we could now decide basically prepping us for the next round to go to one of those locations so she could move one two three spaces in here spending one dollar she would lose one health and one sanity for that but then again camping here in the city of gux there's only one token I means she could gain it but there is nothing great if there would be two then i would go for the call of the dead no i think let's do that one two and three so first of all she has to spend a dollar for the extra movement then it's a hazardous border here so she has to take a hit i think we are assigning this to her leather coat which can take up to three um, hits basically before it's getting discarded so that's a pretty cool one but of course um we still has to take the sanity hit which she simply has to suck up. but that's also problematic for her because she's already at four out of seven she doesn't have anything no now she okay again we can use the new field of study after you suffer okay we can focus one thing so let's not focus let's give her simply one more remnant wow she really is swimming in remnants now for i think there is no limit in respect to remnants as far as i remember and yes i nearly forgot you can spend those remnants to pretty much avoid the hit the sanity hit from the spells okay that's really powerful for her then cool then we have Mark Harrigan, right? So he could now he use his one-man army after your end your movement in a monster space or after a monster moves uh, to perform an attack action as an additional action. So that's pretty helpful, actually. So she he gains basically this action here for free. And I guess we are going to... I mean, we want to get rid of this because this one, okay, it will move up, but... Again, nothing to gain there, actually. So, yeah, let's let's do that. So, we are moving in here to the Vicious Clutton. It will engage us. Is there something? No, the creature looks up, still licking clotted blood from its white fangs. Okay, nothing to gain there. So, we are basically assigning it to this. Now, we are using the one-man army, which is here. Um, after entry movement in a monster space, you may become delayed to perform an attack action. Then, when we are coming delayed we can use the dogged ability here which also comes in together with sophie's portrait so i think that's okay so yes we are getting delayed so we are losing basically one action or are we no let's do that let's do that i think that's still it we have a lot of um sanity hits we we want to get rid of so i think that's definitely good and then we are basically getting the attack action for free right and we can take any number of attack actions so if we are not able to defeat it we can still move on right he's only rolling four dice that's definitely a bummer he, he really needs a weapon i think he really needs a weapon and the revolver is out there so maybe we can get it but okay that's the first attack action that's a free one are you kidding me? What's going on with these attacks here? I think I'm not going to use Sophie's portrait now. When you use once per round, while we, so you may suffer one damage. Because we can go for another attack action because of our, what is it? Um, steadfast, right? Yeah, let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. So we are basically, that's our second action now. Oh, oh are we losing it right now? Oh, that's a good point. The delayed one... When we are getting delayed, basically mid-turn, are we losing the next action? I th oh, that's okay. That's a good point. Let me quickly check that. And yes, indeed, it would be my next action that we are losing. So, yeah, yeah, I think. So we could now basically simply set up. So in this case, I will use Sophie's portrait, actually. So we are tapping it. We will have to suffer one wound for that, but then we can reroll all of our dice. And I think we have to assign, oh, we can assign it to Jenica Capra. Let's do that, actually. That's fine. So we are re-rolling all of our dice, right? One or all? Yeah. Okay, so come on. Two successes. And yes, 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 yes. This was amazing. Cool stuff. So this means this monster is no more. And now we are going to our basically second action. It was to move action. We gain an additional action because of our one man army. Well, a lot going on. And then with our next action, we are standing up. But now we are not delayed. Oh, okay. Ah, that's really a timing thing. 
didn't really pay attention here. That was very, very stupid. But okay, not taking it back because dice have been rolled, but at least we were able to get rid of the monster and that was basically the plan all along. And then we are pretty much moving into the monster phase. Everyone has taken their action. Let's simply start with the mummified Gurk. Um, place one doom in the unstable space, which is still, yes, the own library in this case. And again, we check the outbreak rule here. If a space has four or more doom, remove three doom from that space. Then place one doom in each other space in that neighborhood. Yeah, okay. One and two. And one basically goes to the scenario sheet. Right now there are still only quote unquote two, so we are not flipping anything just yet. That's at least something. So we have dealt with the mummified Gog. And again, I th still think because it's not a hunter, it doesn't have a prey, whatnot. So I think he's not going after our ally here. I could be wrong, but I, I, no, I think I'm, I'm okay here. Then, yeah, this will simply reattach to Michael. And this one will simply um, attack us. So one and one. And after this monster attacks, you become fatigued if you cannot suffer one additional damage. So we can get fatigued, but let's assign some more damage. So one has to go here so we can use the old boiler at least once more. And this one goes to the warding stone because otherwise we would be dead or defeated in this case. Okay, then we have basically dealt with both of the monsters out there. Let's move into the encounter phase, which is only Mark and Agatha. And I think in this case, it doesn't really matter too much, I believe. So no, let's start with Mark here at the St. Mary's Hospital. And yes, the chances were really high that it is an event. It is an event. Nurse Sharon says she should have your medicine ready shortly. So we are going with an observation check, which is two dice for him. So let's see. Yeah, that's a success. Awesome. A five. If you pass, you catch sight of a man with a large gashes in his side just as he turns. Gain one clue from your neighborhood and you or an ally may recover two health. That's okay. Uh, or it's or. I think this is something that you cannot spread things. But okay, that's fine. So we are adding one clue in here. And I think in this case, we are going to heal ourselves in this case. Yes, we could go for Janica, but right now I think that's still okay. Then we are discarding the event card. So it's now Hangman's Hill which is the unstable space. So that's important for the mummified Gook. And then it's Agatha and unfortunately she didn't draw an event card. You search through the stacks of books until you come across an old mystic journal. It will take some time to pass the faded words or you could ask Miriam. Reveal the top three spells in the deck. You may buy one of them or become fatigued to gain one of them. Return the rest to the bottom of the deck. Okay, that's very nice. And I think I forgot the fatigued thing for, um, who was it, Michael, which says while resolving a test as an additional cost to reroll one or more dice, remove one die from that test. After you perform a focus action, discard this card. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad, but I think let's see what spells we draw. And here are some amazing ones. The intervene would be really insane because again, it allows you to add some basically additional successes to other players while another investor on any space resolving a test. Mm, that's pretty strong. She cannot afford it. She could go fatigued. She could definitely go for the flesh wall, which is also not bad. If you are another investigator or an ally in any space would suffer damage, you may test and we can basically prevent that damage. And the wreck, we would test lower plus one, defeat one monster in your space with remaining health equal to or lower than your test result. You may perform this action while engaged with the monster. But that's also very, very nice. Plus one. And for her, that's a good, I think we are going with this one because that will also leave her with some dollars. So let's do that with one dollar. We will go with the rack spell. These go to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, I think that's nice. And last but not least, we are moving into the mythos step. And let's see, we have two tokens left. So here's another headline. And the first one we had was really horrible. Um, banned books, bandied about. Underground reading circles, straight copies of forbidden text libraries, schools threatened. What about the First Amendment? 
For each clue you have, you suffer one horror unless you discard that clue. Okay, that was perfect for him. He doesn't have any clue whatsoever. Wow, that was really dodged the bullet here. Nice. And then I know it's the reckoning. Let's see, place one ally face down in the street nearest the unstable space, then spawn one monster in the unstable space. Yeah, that's really not great. So I guess we are adding the ally here into the street space and then we are adding a monster to the um, space. Yeah, that's really problematic. And that's the haunting dead. And again, it goes into the unstable space. I believe whatever it says. And yeah, it even says um, unstable space. And that's also uh, coming with a new one, cloaked or hidden or whatever is that keyword here. Ah, it says here, shrouded and elusive. Wow, <laughs> a lot going on. The haunting dead. Place one doom in this space. Okay, that's really massive. And the cool thing about those shrouded monsters, we are not allowed to check out the backside of this card. And we don't know how many hits it can take, actually. So we also don't know how it would affect our um, basically rolling whatsoever. We can assign damage. And whenever we are then really engaging it, then we would flip it to the other side. And if it already has enough damage, then it's immediately defeat but in this case we simply don't know and elusive simply means it's not going to basically engage us automatically but i believe we can uh, engage it on our own but as long as it's here it's a lurker it will send more doom in there so that's really a horrible thing because if we go there we would also <laughs> <laughs> okay, things are going to go downhill from here for sure. Okay, now we are adding all of those Mythos tokens back to the Mythos Cup. So basically, Michael McClan is done. So let's draw the tokens for Mark. Here is the first one. Again, we know the drill. This thing is moving. It's flipping to the other side. We are flipping it. I will put it randomly in here. Doesn't really matter too much. No, I think it goes down here actually. Sorry for that, it should be here. Um, that was this, apart from that, nothing else will happen as far as I remember, All right? Yeah, it is. And oh gosh, another monster. Oof, okay, that, that's definitely getting problematic for sure. We have the crazed fiend spawn at most doom, which is up here, a move towards most doom actually. But I think again, uh, they have now new prey. They will go after our allies on the board because of the bound to darkness. Yeah, that's still in effect. Mm, that's that's really not great. And then last but not least, it's Agatha. We have a clue. Nice the clue goes to south side. I will prepare everything basically afterwards. I think it doesn't really change a lot right now. Let's keep going. And <laughs> oh, another cape burst. This could be problematic. I think that's not bad. So again, we are adding this uptown. Basically, we have a gate burst on every space of uptown. We are adding one doom and then we are shuffling this. And in this case, I guess that's okay-ish, I would think. So let's see, it's only three cards. So we are simply shuffling those, putting that to the back of the deck. And yeah, no, those were the two things. I have already added the extra clue and event card to the south side. And I guess that's basically the end of the round so we are still alive but wow things are really getting scary especially because we are very close um for to three doom up there which would then turn over the dark disciples which might add another monster maybe the mummified good would be i don't know i really don't know and then yeah we have here we are losing doom here we are adding more doom so it's it's really precarious he is pretty much like half dead i would say i mean he still has a chance but it's really not looking great for him, I must say right now. So when he dies, we're also adding one more doom to, to the stack, to the scenario sheet. But at least we are also, I mean, we will flip this one here for sure with our next action. We could even go for a next one. And if these are already two different spawn, again, I really shuffle. I'm not cheating here, guys. Then we are already progressing this and we only need one more clue token on the scenario sheet. So I think overall, there is also light at the end of the tunnel, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a very, very traumatic next one or two rounds for sure. And yeah, with that, let me know what you think I should be doing. Definitely uh, chip in in respect to any goofs I may have made. Again, I will try to resolve that. Typically, I'm only punishing myself when I miss something where I played it 
too positively for me. But let's see about that. Let me know if I forgot something. And again, I will try to correct that. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye.